and I thought, my God, Robot Chicken is one of my favorite cartoons. I usually try for a lot of Nickelodeon, Disney, um, children's animation. So this was such a breath of fresh air to be able to, you know, say fuck in one of my lines. What's the password? 69, but spelled out capital S and the eyes are exclamation points. <gasps> hey, it's Jim Alexander with Real Talker and I'm talking to the cast of Crossing Swords. Uh, how are you guys doing today? We're doing, We're doing great. great. How are you? So, so good, Jim. Good, good. I mean, you know, just trying to, to get through all this. The last few months have been kind of crazy. Yeah. Ideally, we'd be in person, you know, but we got to make it happen some way. Next so time, hopefully, dude. Yeah, hopefully next time we'll all be in person. I uh, wanted to start off asking you guys, what was your first impression when you guys got word of, of this show, the script, uh, what it would consist of? Was there an immediate kind of reaction or thoughts each of you um, kind of had? Elena, we can start with you. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Hi. Oh. Uh, Alana, yes, me, yes, hi. Not bad. Uh, I Yikes. damn Zoom. Um, <laughs> it was, well, when I received the audition, I looked at and I read that it was from Stupid Buddy Productions. And I thought, my God, Robot Chicken is one of my favorite cartoons. I usually try it for a lot of Nickelodeon, Disney, um, children's animation. So it was such a breath of fresh air to be able to, you know, say fuck in one of my lines. I mean, it's little head characters. It just it, it was a walk down nostalgia lane. These are the characters that I these are the little toys I played with in the, back in the eighties when I was a little girl. Um, and I thought, how are they going to do this? What what exactly is this going to entail? It's a, it's a, just an amazing work of art. So happy to be a part of this. So proud. Tara. Uh, well, I mean, anytime Seth Green does something, we're like all in. Um, we all worked on Robot Chicken and we know how clever and funny um, the stuff is. And it's also like such high quality programming. Like it's really dirty and funny and silly, but so well animated. Um, these guys are so meticulous and patient with the do the stop motion. It's pretty extraordinary. So um, as soon as I saw the script and I knew it was Stupid Buddy, of course I was in. And then the idea, just the title had me like they had me crossing swords really um <laughs> okay, course, it's, just, it's such a funny world and it's a funny world to explore and be a part of and you know what they probably were pretty dirty back then so to get to play in this world and have the freedom to be completely crazy and uh, just creative they, they let us run and play and do all kinds of different voices and play all kinds of different characters and it's this show is definitely a gift and it's super cool that it's premiering during quarantine so people can catch it on hulu and and watch the whole thing and become obsessed with it so we get 10 more seasons there you go well jim for me, jim for me yeah, i got this one jim so jim i think for me it, it was um you know when my first split when i was nine thanks for bringing it up my dad said as he was leaving he goes if you can get a job on a stop motion show uh, about a filthy royal family, then <laughs> then I think there's a chance I'll come back. So that's that's why I took it, and we'll see what happens. You know, life's unexpected. There's a lot of curveballs, but like uh, like T said, it's uh, you know, anything you can do uh with Seth Green and Co. is gonna be a, a good choice on your part. Like nothing's guaranteed, but like track record speak for itself. You know, um. And uh, and also to, to to get to voice characters that are just truly, uh, you know, have no filter is always the best. That's every anybody in voiceover animation wants to be on a show like this. I've got so many friends being like, you beat the shit like I go out for that. Like, and I'm like, well, man, get a better voice, you know. And um, and so. Uh, so, yeah, it's like uh, it's a it's a it's a dream, dude. It's also you know, really fun got- for all, all of us are like playing pretty. <laughs> terrible humans like <laughs> we're, we're like it's the bad it's guy so refreshing we're... yeah i was just yeah. gonna ask like how liberating is it just let loose and have no rules or not have to censor yourself just kind of let it go right in a extremely lot of ways extremely liberal it is extremely liberating. it is my therapy once a week it is my therapy and it is free i get paid to act like an asshole it's half <laughs> it 
<laughs> anything that individually kind of shocked you, surprised you guys, or maybe you learned from being on this show, uh, being part of it, anything that kind of stood out to you personally, individually? Dude, Tony Hale is talented. Didn't know that until the show. <laughs> now I you know. know. Wow, I okay, I thought that was going to hit harder. You guys all just acted like that was a real comment. All right, let's go ahead and edit that out, Jim. you know, the first line, the first line for the audition was, have you ever fucked an 1,800-pound chandelier hastily bolted to the top of the canvas? <laughs> I was in. I had a shot of whiskey. I recorded myself, watched a little Hell Mirren on YouTube, and away I went. Hey, can't do it I, any different. I learned what little wooden penises look like on toys. <laughs> You're gorgeous. I, I knew what they looked like because I have a friend who makes them and sells them for merch. And um, <laughs> do they sell well? <laughs> no. But look, everyone has a passion, Jim. Yes. Now they uh, might. I mean, it, it opened up a whole might. world of imagination and in creativity, right? Oh, that's the thing, dude. Peg people could be the new hot toy come this Christmas <laughs> if we have it. Spoiler alert. Um, yeah, this but... could go down a really bad road. <laughs> <laughs> I think anything at this point is uncensored. I mean, I've seen the, the queen finally exposed and all that on the chandelier. So, I mean, oh, you the know. tiny little fire crotch. It's That's crazy. what I was going to say. It's like my pinky nail. And yeah, old school right there. So, I mean, I didn't even know that these characters, like in, I can't remember what episode it was where uh, uh, a character says something to Ruben, like, you know, keep up, old, uh, you know, old chap. And he's like, old, I. I dare you to find one gray pube on this body. And I was like, I don't even know Peg's at, Peg's at him, but hey, man, you learned there something you new just from watching the show. We're, I mean, and we're changing the world. Everybody. We are changing the world. Yay. One, pe uh, one peg at a time. You're doing one something different. There you go. One peg, one, one peg pube at a time. <laughs> oh, my God. If that's not the tagline for this show or for a hopeful next season. Yeah, I, I'm out now. I mean, I have nothing else with that one. That's the perfect way to end it in that sense. I dig it. So, I dig there it, you go. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, thanks for right, being a lot of humor and, and keep it fun. Hopefully, for you guys sure, it dude. Up. Enjoy Take your pushing competition. <laughs> I can't believe that this is your first beast feast. This festival is enormous. Everybody, throw your swords in the air! Hi! Wait, wait, it's a battle.